Let's broadcast. So we're open now. We are recording. Yep, we're recording. Great. And uh, if you want to take over the screen and put the, yeah. well, actually, um, you, uh, I'll, I'll introduce it first as long as you're ready to sort of take it over when you're ready. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let me just have a look. <coughs> I see we've got an attendee. Right. <clears throat> Do you have the mute controller on your screen, Sam? Um, no, I think. No, nor do I. Strange. Uh, let me just have a look. One sec. No, no. I, I... Hello, everybody who's out there. They've got three. I see Eileen, Aileen, Jackie, and uh, Toshi on. Can you hear me? Sounds like people are muted. I can't see how to get them off of mute. Um... Hang on a second. So I've just unmuted, or oh, I've given, yeah. No talking now. All right, yes, okay. Hello. I got it. Hi there. Hello, 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 good. Just making the technology work. <laughs> it's all right. So that's what comes up actually. Yeah, Glenn, I think you have to. Do them one at a time by the looks of it. Yeah, I also think the video is not on. Because right. this is you now. Uh, right, okay, I can see one, two, one, two, three, four people in.
What do these symbols at the bottom say? Well, I think I think they're to do with if you want to speak. Yeah. That one, the middle one, for his hand. Uh -huh. Yeah, is that Eileen? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, you've got a couple of options at the bottom there. You've got Q and A. Yeah. Uh, and, chat. and chat. Yeah. Um, you should be able to see the chat box. Can you see the chat box? Yeah. You might need to click yeah. on that to open. Yeah. That's it. For the orange, the orange one. one. Okay. And also, if you go into participants. Um, you should also have the option to raise your hand if you want to. Uh... Yeah, we've got to raise hand. Oh, good. Yeah, great. Then there's a third one. Chat. Chat. No, okay. 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 I so. Okay. Okay. What's the first one again? Chat. Question and answer. Question and answer. Raise your hand. Come in. Okay. 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 Oh, and we'll see the messages. You should be. Can you also you should be able to reply in the box? Okay. Uh, well, you can see it. That's the, <laughs> that's the main uh, thing. And we'll uh, obviously mute and unmute you as need be. Uh, still a couple of minutes to go. So we've got uh, 10 out of the 16 signed up in. So I'll give it a couple more minutes to see if we can collect a few more of you together. So just hang loose on this gorgeous evening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh. Yes. Oh, thank you, Carly. There you go. Because it comes up, pick up. There you go, pick up. Okay. All right, uh, one minute to six. So I'll give it one or two more minutes in case anyone else is just popping on slightly late. And then we'll get ourselves going. No, no. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
um, is Sam Coulson. He's the one who just needs hair. Um, you can tell us very easy apart. This uh, session this evening is uh, um, entitled Technology for Support of Adults with Nystagmus. And it's the uh, joint session we one we're going to do in two weeks where we're going to focus on technology for young people with nystagmus. But there's a bit of a crossover between the two. Um, so, but we'll try and focus next time on perhaps uh, other technology for younger people. Um, so thank you, uh, Sue, Sue Ricketts, for setting this uh, up for us. We're very pleased to uh, talk to you tonight. Um, and I'll hand over to Sam Coulson, who's going to run the event, which is a mix of case studies, demonstrations, and the opportunity for you to um, for you to uh, raise questions uh, and just chat and whatever is needed. We've got all the uh, lines open for you. So uh, 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 um, stick your hands up or ask questions and uh, we'll fit them into the discussion. So Sam, over to you. Great. Thanks, Gwen. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for coming. Um, yeah, it's great to, to be joining forces with the Nystagmus Network. Um, yeah, I have a bit of a personal link with the Nystagmus Network as well, which I don't know if I told Glenn about, actually. But um, when I was at Dr I went to, to university and I trained to be an actor. And um, there's a, a famous actor uh, called Richard Wilson, who many of you might know as Victor Meldrum. I know that he's a patron of the Nystagmus Network. Um, well, he actually uh, helped fund me through my studies. So I've got a personal connection to the Nystagmus Network as well, which is which is great. Um, but it's lovely to be here, and hopefully we can, um, yeah, we can uh, explore some some technology today that that, that might help you or uh, family members. So let's get cracking. So I'm just going to share my screen with you all. Perfect. So this is us. Um, this is an introduction to, to low vision technology. Um, just move that on. There we go. Perfect. So, uh, the specific areas of interest that, that we're going to be looking at today now, um, creating the, the content for this uh, session, um, obviously, based on what, what Sue's. Uh, the information Sue's given us um, about, you know, the, the, the Nystagmus network service users and the troubles that, that you may encounter because of your condition. Um, we've tried to uh, adapt this this presentation as closely as we can um, to the issues that you face and then the, obviously the solutions that, that we, we can provide to, to uh yeah, to help with those. So, so these are some of the areas that we're going to be looking at specifically. We've got edu some educational tools, um, how we can um, magnify the, the, the fonts and, and change the style of the font, the contrast. Um, some more specific areas, like how we can reduce high strain and, and screen glare. Um, and then also some alternatives to magnification as well. Um, there are some other interesting pieces of technology, um, apart from magnification, that that, that we'll be showing you today. Great. So just a little bit about us before we, we, we get into the, the, the meat of the presentation. Um, so at the moment, the, the sort of current figures at the moment we know of, there are over 2 million people in the UK living with sight loss. Um, there's over 360,000 are registered blind. Um, so, you know, we believe that the right support um, is is crucial. Um, now, Nystagmus has a, an incidence rate of around um, one in 1,000 people in the general population. Um, it's the most common form of visual impairment among school-aged children. Um, now, you know, being told that you have a visual impairment, you know, we know can be, you know, a distressing, um, it's a distressing you know, experience. And, we want to reassure our, our you know, uh, service users that there is a range of technology solutions out there that will enable you to, to live with sight loss um, you know, and also to, to achieve your full potential as well. 
and try and obtain as much independence as, as possible. Um, so that's where obviously Sight and Sound come into it. And, and Sight and Sound as a company, we have we have over 40 years experience supporting those um, with low vision and blindness, but also literacy difficulties as well. Um, you know, and that our ethos, if you like, is you know, you know, we aim to provide the most suitable solution um, and, and to improve quality of life. At the end of the day, that's that's what what this is about. Um, but also today, we want to hear from you. Um, you know, this is a, a bit of an open discussion, if you like. Um, you know, um, we want the, the technology to be challenged today as well. You know, that's important. You know, we want you to ask questions and to, to, to test it, you know, to challenge the technology, what it can and can't do. Um, you know, because we're aware that everybody's condition is, is very personal. Um, you know, everybody's condition is different. Some products will work for, for some and, and may not work for others. And, um, you know, so it's important that we really, you know, we really challenge the technology um, today um, to, to try and, you know, get the most out of it. Um, excellent. So enough about us. Um, the, the basic idea of the, the, um, the presentation is I'll be delivering two different scenarios. Um, two different um, nystagmus related uh, scenarios. Um, we will discuss a number of solutions, um, and then, you know, based on on, on what this scenario involves, uh, we'll try and choose the most suitable solutions for that person. Um, there is no right or wrong answers. It's very much uh, a broad, open discussion. But you know, there will be some that we feel are better suited. Um, so please don't feel that you know there's no such thing as a a, a silly um answer um it's all very open um fantastic so we'll do a bit of discussion as a group and then we'll review everything together excellent okay so we can move into the first scenario perfect so this is catherine um catherine is 74 years old she lives on her own um catherine has acquired nystagmus condition which is caused by diabetes um now there are other uh, causes um, and conditions that could uh, cause acquired nystagmus. Um, for instance, brain tumour, um, some sort of neurological problem or a, a head injury, for instance. Um, even actually, even nicotine and alcohol abuse has, has been known to cause uh, acquired nystagmus, uh, but that's very, very rare cases. Um, but this is, this is Catherine's condition is, is acquired nystagmus, so not, not from birth. Um, this was acquired through diabetes. Um, now, the difficulties that Catherine um, uh, encounters um, include um, the discomfort, discomfort from bright lighting. Um, she struggles with printed, digital and handwritten text. Um, now, that's important why I've, I've broken those up, um, because as you'll see in a second, um, some of the products um, can deal with, with, with certain formats of text better than others. Um, so it's important to bear that in mind, um, printed, digital and handwritten text. She has issues with tying shoelaces and buttoning jackets um, and also struggles with seeing faces at distance and objects such as doorways, um, which, you know, all very, we probably consider very simple things, but, but um, you, know, um, you know, very, very, very difficult uh, for somebody that, that can't, you know, find the doorway or, or, or see a face, that sort of thing. So, so those are the main difficulties for Catherine. And now we're going to look at the solutions together. Now, this is just a, a sort of a brief uh, simulation of, of what somebody with, with nystagmus may, may see. Um, as you can see there, it's, it's um, quite a blurred screen. You know, we know that nystagmus causes the eye um, to, to, to move in very, very rapid um, movements, um, which can cause dizziness and, and uh, you know, um, disorientation. Um, so this is just a very sort of general um, simulation of, of, of what Catherine may be able to see. Okay. Perfect. So I've just um, bullet pointed uh, Catherine's um, difficulties there again, just, just so we can bear those in mind as, as we look at the solutions together. Perfect. So first things first, we've got the A site electronic glasses now i'm going to show you guys these uh, very very briefly um don't want us to spend 
too much time. Um, now, if I just, I'm just going to change camera for a second. Now, these glasses, um, it, as you can see, it's a wearable device. So you would wear this as a headset, essentially. And what you would do is um, you can magnify um, up to 15 times using these glasses. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, they're very good for obviously seeing at long distance. Um, they have three outline modes as well, which is very important. Um, can't you know. really see them on your camera, Sam, so you might need to bring them up a little bit and bring the light up a little bit as well. Yeah, no problem. Because uh, you're not on spotlight video, so you're still in the small caption on uh, the side of the screen. If I just spotlight myself for a second, yeah? Yeah. Is that, is that more helpful? Well, I can start to get a feel for it now, but the light's up and down. And normally spotlight video, you can actually bring yourself into main focus over the top of the presentation. But you're in the small box at the yeah, moment, I think. Possibly because I'm sharing the screen, so... Um... Yeah, stop the screen share and... And then that's it. That's better. Uh, and then you can pick it up again. That's that's better. People can see you on the large screen now. Great. So this essentially, guys, is the is the A site. Okay. So it's a it's a wearable device. Okay. Um, not the most subtle, uh, I admit, um, but it's fantastic um, solution. As if you can see on the on the profile view there, you still have all of your uh, peripheral vision. Um, so that helps with, with, with keeping balance. Um, you don't feel disorientated as you still have your, your peripheral vision. And it does come with this, uh, this, this remote control, which is attached. This allows you to increase, decrease magnification. Um, it also allows you to uh, toggle between the, the three outline modes, which is, is listed there. Now, this is important. Oh, can't really see this. Now, the, the outline modes, they do exactly what they say on the tin. They stick. Um, uh, an outline around um, people, objects, anything that, that comes in in front of the, the camera. There, this is great for um, you know for, for you know for, for, for navigating your way around um, a room, for instance. Um, obviously, this can be used outside. I'm aware that people may feel um, a little bit more you know uh, anxious about using this outside because of the the, the size of it. But this is perfect for avoiding objects, obstacle avoidance. Um, the outline modes. It sticks a big thick thick line around the outline of the object, um, and it also uses augmented reality as well. Now that might seem all boring and technical, but basically that means it's animated. Everything that you see is animated, so it's 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 high contrast, very um, you know very clear um, animation essentially. Uh, that's, that's that's the A site in a, in a nutshell. Um, it's also got a, a brilliant mode called um, floating reading mode as well, which is actually specific to somebody with nice darkness. Um, it actually puts the text um, in, a, in a separate box to the right-hand side of your peripheral vision. Um, so obviously, for somebody with nice darkness that their, their eyes are moving uh, constantly, it keeps the text positioned in a, in a, in a box to the, to the right or to the left of your field of view. So... That can be really helpful for somebody with nice Agnes. Um, great. So I'll reshare my screen with you all. Um, perfect. So next up, we've got uh, this is a this is a, a desktop magnifier um, with with OCR. So that's optical character recognition. Um, and basically, what that means is it, it's a desktop magnifier, which which are very very common. Um, it, it will magnify anything under the camera there. Um, and you can toggle the, the contrast, the colors, but also you can scan the text and it will be read out loud for you as well. Okay, so it's a, it's a multi um, faceted solution. So you've got your, your text to speech and magnification as well. Uh, also there we've got the Orcam, which is another wearable device. Um, now this is a really advanced piece of kit. I'm also gonna give you a, uh, a quick demo of this as well. So uh, that's it, cool. Yeah. So the Orcam, um, it's a tiny, tiny little solution, um, which is, that's how big, that's that's where the technology is, all in this, this tiny solution. This can fit to any set of frames, okay? So if you don't wear frames, um, you don't have to, you know, you, it comes with a set of dummy frames, but it can also be, be um, fitted onto 
um, existing frames as well. It just uses magnets and it clips to the side of your frames and you can simply tap the side of the OCAM, scan the text and the text is then read aloud through a, a speaker at the back of the OCAM there and it's read out loud to the user very clearly. Um, it also has a, uh, a gesture mode so you can even using a, a, a finger you can point to the text and it will capture the fingernail and it will read whatever is underneath the fingernail so it's very very sort of advanced stuff um, but the key piece of information for this I think for this uh, scenario without giving too much away is that um, this will also uh, this also has the ability to do, to do facial recognition okay so this will tell you if a man a woman a child is in front of you um, and you can even store that person's name into the OCAM and you can store their name with it okay so it has the ability to do facial recognition as well as text to speech as well um, so it's a very very advanced little piece of technology um, so that's the OCAM and we'll go back to the presentation next up we've got a bog standard portable magnifying glass now this is um, this is, you know, a very, very common uh, solution for anybody with a visual impairment. You can get them from a sight loss uh, clinic uh, advisor very, very easily. Limited magnification, um, but portable, lightweight and affordable. Um, so they absolutely serve a purpose. And then finally, um, another desktop magnifier. So this is very similar to the, the OCR desktop. However, this one just has magnification only. Okay, there's no... There's no OCR, there's no text-to-speech audio with this one. Um, but a few um, you know, unique um, features. It's got a, a movable XY table. Um, so you can sit your text underneath the camera there on the table, and you can actually move the table from side to side, um, and you can actually navigate around the, 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 the page there very, very easily and very smoothly. Uh, no, no jagged movements. Um, and it's got a very, very, you know, it's got 30, 30 times magnification as well. So, um, again, useful. Um, so those are our solutions, guys. We've got five there, okay? We've got the A-Site, the OCR desktop, the OCAM, the portable magnifying glass, and the desktop video magnifier. Now, I'm going to open this up to you now and to discuss between yourselves and with us if you, uh, what you feel work, would work best for Catherine, bearing in mind her... Um, difficulties there above okay so we'll, we'll spend maybe five minutes just just having a, a brief chat if anybody wants to ask any questions as well please do um and then we'll have a look at what we thought was the best yeah so uh, sam you probably need to go back into presentation mode because you're we're seeing all of your screen with the next slides and notes as as well uh, so guys if you if you can find the chat box and if you wanted to pop up any of the uh, uh solutions you think might have suited uh uh, Catherine with her conditions or ask any questions um, if you can stick your hands up I can unmute you some of you are unmuted some of you are muted I note so if you want to chat sort of let me know as well um, and uh, so you can always go to the chat box and say you know uh, just the products you know say or camera and put it into the box and we'll and we'll see what you guys think might fit. Um, but if not, we'll, a uh, uh, couple of minutes, we'll just take you through what we think are the best solutions uh, in this scenario. Um, there's no wrong answers, actually. Yep, the hand lens, some uh, Chris has popped in there. Um, they all do some part of the job. It's the, it's the ones that do the jobs best. And when we get to the other end of this, we'll also, um, Tell you a little bit about the uh, retail prices of these products because I'm sure that would certainly have a bearing on what uh, people can afford to and want to invest in as well. So we've got the hand lens, uh, which is uh, 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 one solution. The oil cam my eye, which is probably the absolutely the other end of the investment scale, uh, has popped in there. Anybody else want to pop any uh, anything in there? Uh, the A site is new to me. Yeah, that's a very interesting. Um, product and it does obviously uh, look a little bit like uh, a sort of a ski mask or something like that but you know uh, the vision through it is is really enhanced um, um, yeah someone's popped in the my eye for face recognition 
it's quite clever. You have to teach it to see the face. So you take a picture of the face and store the name against it. And then after that point, if it sees the same face, then it will tell you uh, this is Glenn or this is, uh, um, uh, you know, this is Sam or whatever. And you take pictures from a number of different angles so that if it sees the side of your head uh, as well, it would still recognize who you are. Uh, seeing AI, yes, we haven't put that up as one of the solutions, but of course the uh, the app is quite powerful as well uh, on, on, on the iPhone. Um, well, the, one of the challenges with all the apps is that they're not really uh, supported through um, uh, in, in the in, or trained really. You have to sort of get on and run those things yourself. Um, the app for the video magnifier has uh, has some values as well. Sam, do you want to take us through? Um, what we thought and um, also why you didn't choose some of the others that were in the list. Yes. Okay, I'll just make sure I've got presenter view uh, enabled. Um, try again. Okay. Hello everyone, bear with me. Is that better, Glenn? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's better. That's perfect. Yeah. So, so just gonna place down to here. Uh, hello everyone. Almost there. Great. So here we have some but yeah, the uh, suggested solutions. So I'm just going to. Oh, that's frustrating. That's in the way there at the bottom of the screen. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so here we go. We've got the. Um, yeah, no, no surprises there really with the A site. Um, the A site augmented reality glasses. So they they are they were actually designed with uh, specific. Um, night stagnus related features such as the, the floating reading mode which I told you about um, this lets you freeze the view as well of the of the of the text um, so as I said it's great for, for the nice stagnus um, difficulty with the, with the shaking of the eye um, you can adjust the zoom with the with the uh, the a site as I said um, it's got a very powerful outline mode which which would help Catherine locate doorways stairs um, obstacles around the home um, and yeah it would also allow her to, to tie shoelaces more comfortably as well um, it would it would it would allow the, um, the shoelaces to be of a um, you know a, a, a thicker width and and it would give a, a better idea of, of you know a, a very small detail such as tying shoelaces um, excellent yeah, and, and also the ASI, it's got advanced contrast modes as well to help with, with light sensitivity. Um, so you can adjust the, the lighting level, you can customise it to suit your needs, which is important. Um, also there we've got the, the desktop video magnifier. Um, this is perfect again for, for Catherine. Um, it allows her to monitor the colour, the contrast, the magnification. Um, and it's, it's very simple um, you know, and intuitive to use as well um, it's you know not there's not many complicated features with this um, it's got a movable table um, and it will allow her to, to magnify any text um, underneath there so it's perfect and these these have been around for a long long time they're very very popular um, and they're still around for, for a reason um, and then then we've got the Orcam um, now, again you know it's already been said but the facial recognition feature there is key for Catherine um, this will allow her to, you know, she lives alone. So if somebody comes to the door, um, you know, um, and she's not sure it is, it can be quite intimidating. It can be quite, um, you know, can cause a certain amount of anxiety for, for, you know, somebody that's living alone. So that would, the door would be open. The Orcam would tell you if the person's name was stored into the phone, obviously it would, it, into the Orcam, sorry, it would tell you. Um, but if not, it would say something like there is a person, there is a man, there is a woman, that sort of thing. And then also I've put I've added this as a little additional extra, but the um, the Mini Vision mobile phone um, 
this is a fully um, accessible, um, visually visually impaired friendly mobile phone, essentially. Now, I've added this uh, purely because the current environment that we're in, um, we're in the lockdown um, period still. Um, lots of people of Catherine's age, for instance, are struggling to stay in contact with family, with friends. Um, you know, they're struggling to, you know, to use phones, for instance, send send text messages or, or even even make calls. And this is a very basic um, tactile phone. There's no touch screen involved. It's very basic, but it's got a full screen reader. Um, uh, the phone, which which basically means all of the content of the phone is read out loud for Catherine. So she doesn't have to rely on trying to use her eyes. Um, she can actually have everything read out loud for her. So um, any messages, for instance, that are, are sent to will be read out loud. Um, any notifications, you have a text message, you have a missed call, that sort of thing. Everything is read aloud. And she can even speak into the phone and say, call Sam. Um, you know, that sort of thing. She can dictate text messages. So it's very useful. Um, especially for somebody of Catherine's age who, you know, doesn't want an all singing, all dancing mobile phone. Something very basic, very simple, but really useful, especially in the current environment. Um, and then the two that we felt not as um, as, as, as ideal for, for Catherine, um, we went with the OCR desktop. Now, some of you may have thought, oh, well, um, you know, that's, that'd be perfect. It will read, it will read it aloud for us. You can magnify it. It's a two in one. Um, sadly, the, the OCR desktop, although it's a brilliant solution, um, as I said, it's multi-purpose, but um, the OCR there won't actually read handwriting. Um, sadly, at the, at the moment, um, all these really advanced pieces of technology, um, they still haven't got around um, reading handwritten text. They'll read printed text and digital text perfectly, um, but, but handwriting is, is still a work in progress. Um, so we felt that wasn't as suitable at the moment for Catherine. Um, and then the, the portable magnifying glass, as I said, it's limited magnification. Um, although, again, it's very, very useful, does serve a purpose, but, but there are more advanced um, pieces of kit out there um, for, for someone in Catherine's position. I mean, they all, they all do um, somewhat of a job and no, nothing does, uh, doesn't handle some part of it. So it's really finding technology that, um, suits the particular way in which the uh, nystagmus is is causing the challenges and issues and picking something that works for them so the um the eyesight glasses do certain things um probably help balance and uh, like that but the desktop video magnifier of course can magnify handwritten text um which uh the uh or cam and the desk ocr desktop don't so it really does depend on how the condition manifests itself to what technology you would use. And that's why it's really important to try lots of different things um, before you choose. And the other thing, of course, is, is price-wise. Um, uh, Sam, just, just, just go through the different prices of those type of pieces of equipment, because yeah. um, none of them are cheap, apart from, of course, the handheld uh, magnifier. And yeah. that's probably worth people understanding that. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's important. And, and affordability is a, is a key um, factor in, 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 you know, in this as well and and a key factor in our assessment of, 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 of you know people's conditions as well we don't just want to sell a piece of technology that's going to collect dust you know it needs to be um, needs to be suitable so for instance the ace site um, is not cheap this is four thousand pounds okay so I'm just going to spotlight this again the ace site um, four thousand pounds worth of technology there um, again it isn't cheap but you know um, it could be a life-changing solution for somebody you know it may allow them to watch television um, you know to carry out basic tasks that they weren't able to do before so that's the the ace site the orcam um, also is is an expensive piece of kit but this is three thousand five hundred pounds the orcam there is a, a slightly cheaper version um, which just does the reading it doesn't have the facial recognition um, and that's two thousand seven hundred um, and then we've got the desktop magnifier and the OC des OCR desktop. They can range from anywhere between 1800 to sort of 3000 pounds around that figure, depending on um, the, the, how advanced the, 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 the piece of kit is. Um, and then, yeah, then we've got yeah, obviously your portable, portable magnifying glass, which is, you know, um, you can pick them up for free at the, uh, 
<laughs> the uh, low vision clinic, but um, obviously has its limitations. Um, so that gives you an idea of the pricing of the, the products. Great. So um, if we don't have any more questions for the time being, Glenn, should we move forward? Yep. Move on to the next one. Yep. Great. Okay. So uh, one second. Oh, sorry about this. My uh, internet connection is a little bit slow today. So. There we go. Right. Sure. Okay, everyone. So. Glenn, are you picking up this, this bar across the bottom of my screen? Uh, hang on, let me move the box out of the way. Now, no, you're o you're okay. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry about that, everyone. It's a little bit frustrating having that uh, in, the, in the way there, but anyway, we'll we'll survive. Okay, good. So this is our next uh, next second and final scenario today. Okay, so this is Sandy. Okay, we've got a bit of a contrasting scenario now. We've got a 23 year old student who's studying biology at university. Uh, Sandeep has a combination of ocular albinism and nystagmus. Um, now, Sandeep is eligible for, for DSA support. Now, that's de uh, Disabled Student Allowance Support. Um, now, we'll, we'll talk in a bit more detail about this in a second. Um, but briefly, um, this is available for, for, for students in higher education. Um, it, it enables them to apply for funding for assistive technology. Um, so, so we'll be looking at uh, DSA in a little bit more detail as well. Um, now, some of these difficulties include, um, again, balance, coordination, depth perception, and um, also, yeah, we've got there, he struggles to read printed text um, and the digital text. And also, um, Sandeep struggles with focusing on a, a, a television or a, a computer monitor, um, which obviously as a, as a, a young student um, is quite important. Um, be using computers um, quite a lot. Okay, so those are, our, um, those are our difficulties in our scenario. Now we'll move on to our... Now this just gives you another, um, another simulation of uh, what ocular albinism, um, yes, can, um, can and can cause. Okay, so now this is what um, what uh, somebody with, with, with normal vision would see. Uh, and just to get the contrast there, this is what Sandeep um, may, may see. Okay, so it's, um, everything is much, much brighter, um, much, much more, um, yeah, a much higher contrast there. Um, so that just gives you a sort of a, a general idea of Sandeep's condition. Okay, so moving on now. I'm just going to have to keep moving this box around. Okay, good. Okay, so we've got the potential solutions now. And this is, again, we've got the, the, the difficulties up there at the top. Now, the first one is another wearable device. So what I'll do is I'll... Uh, I'll stop sharing my screen in a second. Um, but yeah, so basically, it's another wearable device. It's actually a, an Android smartphone. Um, Android being not, not an iPhone, so it's a, um, an Android phone, um, a smartphone, which is actually connected into this um, smart headset. And essentially, this is similar to um, virtual reality in a way. So you have no peripheral vision with this one. Everything is... is, is um, functions through the through the headset and through the uh, through the actual phone itself um, but this has um, many many different features um, which may be of use to uh, still got the presentation Sam so we probably need to get onto your spotlight yeah that's fine yeah I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry no no don't worry, don't worry. so here we go okay yeah. so yeah this is it guys so we've got the uh, the A side. So it's another wearable device. Okay. So it's, um, this is a sort of a profile view. Okay. So I've got no peripheral vision there. Um, but 
just to give you an idea of of how the phone uh, disconnects. So it's so this is it basically. So it's a uh, so these are the the this is the headset and it has uh, a few controls on the side there. This is like a magnification wheel and it's all touch sensitive. Okay, there's a couple of tactile buttons, um, but most of them are sort of touch sensitive. Um, but, but what Iris Vision have done is they've actually, uh, they've adapted the Android phone and they've put their software onto the Android phone, um, which obviously that, that controls all of the, um, all of the features and the, the functions is, is via the, via the, the phone there. Um, and there's sort of a dock, there's a dock on the, on the side of the, uh, of the headset there, which allows you to place the, the phone into the headset. And then obviously you pop it on. Okay. Right. Um, and you can magnify with this. Um, it's got a range similar to the ACE site. Um, it's got a range of different, um, different modes. For instance, it has a, uh, a television mode, um, for instance. Um, so this optimizes brightness when you watch the television. So you can, you can customize, um, it, it automatically optimizes um, the brightness of the television, for instance. Um, what else can it do? Uh, obviously, you can adjust the magnification. Um, yeah, and it also allows you to have a 75% field of view as well. Um, so you've got, a, you've got a, quite a large field of view there. Um, but because it's a smartphone, you can actually connect this up to the internet. Um, if many of you are familiar with Alexa or Google, Google Home, for instance, you can actually connect it to Alexa. You can actually speak to the headset, um, you know, and you can use it um, as a smart device in that sense as well. Um, so it's really sort of uh, useful, very, very um, varied device. There's a lot of features on there, a lot of different viewing modes. There's a specific um, retinitis pigmentosa function as well. Um, but there's um, lots of different viewing modes and contrast changes that you can use there on there. Um, next up, we've got the, um, I believe, we've got the Sudo band. Let me just have a quick look. No, we don't. We've got a portable video magnifier next. So what I'm going to do is I'll just share my screen one more time so we can see that. One second. Come on. There we go. Right. Okay, okay, good. So. No. Oh, sorry about this, everyone. It's not playing nicely today. Where are we? There we go. So. One second. There we go. There we go. Okay. So next up we have the portable video magnifier. Okay. Now this is uh, many of you will have come across these already. Uh, very popular solution. Very very simple. Very straightforward. Um, yeah, it's a digital magnifier. So it's uh, similar to the handheld, uh, except it's 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 in high definition. Um, you've got much more magnification, two to four times. Um, I'll give a brief, brief demo of this now. Um, if I just hook this up onto the lenses here. Okay. I'm just going to change my camera so you can all see. There we go. Okay, everyone. So, yeah, this is the uh, this is the Ruby XL HD. So it's a very um, portable, uh, really neat little solution um, that can actually uh, highlight the text there. So you'll see it's it's in high definition, um, high contrast mode at the moment. I can change the the colours and the contrasts depending on what you know what condition I have um, or, or the severity of my nystagmus. I can I can choose which which colour works best. I can magnify in there up to 24 times we got uh, there we go we've got a couple of other features like you can you can freeze that on the on the on the screen there um, and then you can you can also save um, 
save images and, and documents into the internal memory and export them to a computer if you want to. Um, so that, that's 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 um, the Ruby XL HD. They do come in a in a, ver a variety of sizes. Um, this is the the sort of larger of the family, which is the Ruby Seven, has a seven inch screen. Um, again, you can do all the same things, just has a larger a larger screen. And this one actually has a a pivot a pivot camera as well. Um, so you've got a few more options with that one. Um, but yeah, so that. The Sorry, pivot camera. The pivot camera allows you to see long distance, so you can yeah, yeah, so you can see further yeah, across exactly. the room or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. So this this pivot camera here, you can even pivot it all the way around, so that you can even you know you can use this for putting on jewelry, for instance, putting on necklaces, that sort of thing. Um, it goes all the, all the way around there. Um, so yeah, the pivot camera is very very useful as well. Um, but that gives you an idea of what a uh, what a, a digital magnifier can do. Well, I'm just going to change my uh, viewing mode again. One second. Sorry, well, it's taking quite a long time this day, but um, my computer has been very slow. I've got a lot, a lot of things running at once. So you've been working very hard today, Sam. It's probably got worn <laughs> out. <laughs> Sorry, just bear with me. It's yeah, it's really not playing nicely. Uh, uh, with where are we? Nearly there. Okay. So. Right then. Where are we? There we go. Okay. So. Uh, so next up, guys, we've got the Sunu band. Um, I'm conscious of time, so I won't um, spend too long on, on, on this one, but basically we've got a, uh, this one's quite an interesting device. Um, it is used a lot by, by, by blind, uh, blind people. Um, you know, it's, it's primarily, it's, a, it's an avoidance, um, an obstacle avoidance device. So it's a wearable uh, wrist um, watch uh, type device, essentially. Um, and the the little um, circular connection you can see on the end there, that's actually a sonar um, port there. So that actually emits uh, sonar pulses um, that then obviously you know, bounce off objects um, and you can feel the vibrations in the watch. Um, so for somebody with nystagmus that has difficulties with orientation, with, with, with balance, um, especially younger people as well, you know, if they're doing sports at school and, and that sort of exercise, it's a really useful and neat little device and, 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 and fairly affordable as well. Um, um, I think it's around 240 pounds, the, uh, the um, Suna band. So it's a really neat little, little device that, you know, it's not, you know, just suggested that f f for blind people, you know, people with lower vision that, that maybe do have coordination issues um, could use as well. So it's um, really useful. Now we've got JAWS. Now this is a piece of computer software. Um, this um, allows you essentially to, to have everything on your computer screen read aloud to you, okay? Um, so, you know, e everything and anything that you, you can think of on your screen will, will be read. It can be read um, and you can use a series of keystrokes on your um, keyboard um, to uh, enable certain features. So to navigate your way around your computer, um, you wouldn't need to use a mouse. You can simply do this by using a keyboard, okay? Um, and then finally, we have the Compact 10 HD with speech. Now, this is another magnifying device that doubles up as a reader as well. But this is a little bit um, unique. Uh, I will, again, I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll show you. This is the Compact 10. Now, if I just turn it on, it should already be on. Now, it's automatically in magnifier mode, okay? Now, the reason why this is quite unique is because it's essentially what, what they've done with this device is they've packed all of the functionality of, of a desktop OCR device into a real handy 10-inch portable solution, okay? So this fits into a nice case. You can pop it in your bag, 
Um, you know, as a student, you can pop it in your in your rucksack, take it to school. Um, it's a really handy, portable solution, and you can do all the the same um, things as, as the other magnification devices. You can change the contrast, you can magnify. It's all touch screen, so it's a real intuitive um, touch screen device. Um, but what you can also do is, which is sort of a standard standalone, is um, it has a third camera. There is three cameras in this device. The third camera, which I'm just going to demonstrate for you now, is this camera just here, okay? This one here. This allows you to scan anything um, of a, a, a foot A4 uh, size, okay? Um, which um, a lot of these devices don't do. Um, it also allows you to put 3D objects underneath the camera, such as medication bottles, um, tins of beans, tins of tins of food, for instance, and you can actually magnify them in a live view mode. Um, and it also allows people to write as well, so it's perfect for for signing signatures and um, you know writing, you know, basic school work notes that sort of thing. So this camera is a real game changer in terms of its uh, functionality and how portable it is as well. Um, really useful piece of kit. Um, so that's, in a nutshell, is the Compact 10. I'm just gonna reshare my screen for everybody. Um, when it loads, there we go. And then we can, there we go, okay. Great, so, um, sorry that was a little bit stop start everyone. I was uh, struggling with my internet connection. But yeah, so we've got the Iris Vision uh, wearable device, we've got the portable video magnifier, the Sunu band, which is the Sonar uh, Mobility Smart Band, with the JAWS screen reader, and the Compact 10 HD with speech, which is the magnifier with OCR. So again, any questions or any, any observations, please please voice them now and we'll, we'll have a Quick chat about this. So he's struggling to uh, balance and coordinate with depth perception. He's struggling to read digital and printed text and focusing on the TV and computer monitor are all the challenges that uh, Sandeep has here. And uh, as with the last uh, case study, all of these devices will do something. Um, anybody want to pop on to chat with the ones they think that they might be uh, best suited, uh, we'll give you one or two minutes and then we'll uh, tell you what we think and uh, chatter about them if, uh, if you want to. So uh, he's got a range of, uh, let's just go through the sort of prices while you're thinking about it as well. Um, so. Yeah, of course, so again, go, sorry Glenn, yeah. I was just say go across the pricing of, uh, of those while they're talking yeah. about the Sunu band up there, the pivot view on the camera. Sounds interesting to people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, again, with the, the, the Iris Vision is actually, um, you know, you would have thought actually it would have been a similar price to the Ace site from before, which was around £4,000. But the, uh, the Iris Vision actually comes in, might, don't uh, quote me on this, Glenn, but um, it's around 2000 I believe, between two and three. Um, 2000 I think it's 2000 800 actually so yeah. none of these are cheap devices but they're quite no. powerful um yeah. to be fair so yeah. the, that's the iris, the top end. go on yep carry on yeah the iris vision is you know has a lot of uh, interesting features and it, it does function as a fully functioning smart device as i said you can connect it to all your internet devices mm. so the, the portable video magnifier um they range from uh, a couple of hundred quid all the way up to um five six hundred pounds we actually have these um, heavily promoted at the moment. So the two that I showed you, um, the, the smaller of the two is actually priced at um, £400 at minute, and the, the larger is at £500. Um, so gives you an idea of the price range there. The Sooner Band, as I said, £240, um, you know, but relatively inexpensive. Um, it, it also pairs with, with an app on your phone as well, um, which allows you to uh, customize certain features you can also you can change the mode from indoor to outdoor so um the range of the sonar is 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 uh, adjusted um your screen reader um you, you can buy a home user license um, at the moment 
for 115 pounds for the for the Jaws screen reading license, which is which is very very. Yeah, it's um, normally 699, so that yeah. basically makes your computer yeah, accessible. Yes, yeah, very much. And then the Compact 10 is a this is a brand new piece of kit that's just been released by Optelec. Uh, the version with speech is 1500 pounds, and the you can also buy this just as a magnifier, and that yeah. would be a thousand pounds. So. Sorry, Sam, I've probably just muted you for a couple of seconds there. No, don't worry. I'm just seeing if we've got any... Uh... Yeah, so we're getting... Uh, uh, if Sandeep is a, an Android user already, InVision is a no-brainer. Yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of apps and techs out there. and We haven't really presented apps. Um, uh, they don't tend to be so much in our field of vision, so I'm not suggesting they're not out there or they don't have a place for them. <coughs> um, the Ice Vision is a bit cumbersome. You can't wear it all the time. Agreed. Uh, you may well be wanting to sit down and wear that. It's not sort of thing you'd be walking around wearing. It's more in the home, sitting down. Portable magnifiers, loads and loads and loads of them out there in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. We're just showing you a couple uh, to give you a feel for it. Um, that's, the, that's the sort of feedback, Sam. So do you want to tell them what we think? Yes. Yeah. So, um... What's it? Just seeing why I've got that. Uh, where are we? Yeah. Where is it? I want to be there in a second. Uh, okay, so here we go. Good. So these are our suggested solutions for Sunday. Okay, um, for this, as I said uh, at the start, it's a personal experience. Um, so what we've done here is we've 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 listed the the three that we find suitable at the top there. So we've got the Sunu band, perfect for for uh, well, like I said, orientation, um, balance coordination, um, you know relatively inexpensive um, and also as I said it, it pairs with an app as well so you can actually um, it has navigation settings on there as well so by using a series of vibration patterns you can actually um, navigate your way to certain saved locations um, which sounds complicated um, but I promise you it's, it's, it's more straightforward than it sounds um, so it has a range of features but, but basically that, that the basic uh, need for that would be for Sandeep's coordination issues. Irish Vision, we've said, is a, is a possible. Um, he, he struggles with, with, with viewing a monitor, um, viewing a, uh, which as a student, he will be doing that a lot. Um, this, again, it optimises the contrast and the brightness, so it would um, help with his light sensitivity. Um, it also has, a, as I said, a specific um, TV viewing mode. Um, yes. That's quite I, I must admit, when I first tried it, I was very, very yeah. impressed with the quality of the um, the, the 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 image. Um, it's really, really high quality um, image. The Irish Vision, and then we've got the Compact Ten there, which I think is, again it's it's brilliant. It's portable, um, and it's a it's a really um, sort of neat little solution that that that, that has, like I said, the functionality of a, of a large Magnifier, and that'd be great for Sandeep. You know, his printed uh, schoolwork, um, and also it's fairly discreet as well. So he could take that to university. He could use that in, in lectures, classes, um, and it also will you can use it as a live viewing camera as well. So you can pop things under the live camera, like you know, um, food, for instance, tins of you know. Is that with newspapers? And then the, the box um, solutions there that we've added. This is, is tying into the, the, the de uh, disabled students allowance that we, we talked about earlier. Um, so a, a very common um, solution for, for, for somebody that applies for a DSA support is, is a laptop and printer bundle. Um, as a student, Sandy would be uh, entitled to, to, to all of this. Um, and then underneath that, there is a Zoom text 
uh, Magnify Reader. This is another piece of software. This is magnification software. So this, as it says, this will magnify everything on Sandeep's screen. Okay, um, you know, making it much, much more easier to, to navigate. Um, and it also it, it reduces, massively reduces the, the strain on, on the, the eyes um, if they're trying to, you know, really work hard to look at a, a monitor for a certain amount of time. Um, and also this is worth, worth mentioning as well that we, we um, build all of our laptops for our students. We, so we configure um, any, any laptop that we send out to a student. Program it, has, it has the uh, the software already um, on 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 the on the laptop ready to go. It's ready to go out of the box, and that that that's the same for any of our um, laptop uh, software bundles that we send out. Not just to students, but to anybody. We can configure the solutions for you to make sure that it's ready to go out of the box. Um, and then the two at the bottom there that we've we've suggested maybe aren't as as, as useful. We've got the uh, the portable magnifier. This is a, a very good solution we looked at earlier. Um, however, you know th there are possibly um, you know um, it you know it's it has its limitations for what um, for what Sunday needs to do, and, and, and also because of its small screen there, um, he's not going to be able to magnify much text at one time which you know if he's reading textbooks and whatnot with his schoolwork he may need something a little bit bigger and then the the screen reading software there um although sandy does have a, a severe visual impairment jaws usually is recommended for those with no vision um so as sandy is able to use magnification so we'd advise zoom text for instance or a, a ded dedicated magnifier as we've discussed so so jaws um, yeah, so it wouldn't wouldn't be suitable. Um, but for instance, you know, um, I'm, I'm aware that with nystagmus, generally doesn't tend to deteriorate. Um, however, for for those with um, conditions that do deteriorate, they may find that you know down the line they may need a full screen reader. Um, but but at the moment, Sandy can deal with the the magnification software there. So those are our solutions. Have we got any? Comments or questions, Glenn, so far? Glenn, are we there? Sorry, I was muted. Um, uh, yeah, people are discussing other programs they use, like Kurzweil 1000, which is a very good digital print access. Uh, Open Book is probably more up to date these days. Kurzweil 1000 hasn't been updated for about 12 years, but still does a good job. Um, Open book does the same, allows you to access um, digital print and with a camera connected to it, allows you to access hard print to get it into a computer to be managed. Um, you know, there's uh, a couple of people who mentioned the, the apps like CNAI and other apps uh, that are out there in the marketplace as well. And there's, uh, there's a whole range of different uh, uh, software and hardware products. And we just tried to give you a, a flavor of the different types of classification of them there's some software there's some small handhelds there's some clever vi reality products out there there's some really tiny ones like the orcam um, so we just try to give you a, a flash of the tens and tens of products that are on the market really through here so that's really what we've been picking picking up um, and uh, we're getting towards the end i think of our time now because i think one or two people are starting to drop off so it's probably worth wrapping it up uh, and yep. picking up any messages that come in in the next couple of minutes sam no problem. Yeah, so we'll just whiz through this uh, last couple of slides. This just gives you an idea of, of the uh, scenarios that we've looked at today. Um, two contrasting scenarios and their difficulties that are specific to nystagmus and, and albinism. Um, coordination, light sensitivity being, being sort of the common theme there. Um, and then we've looked at all of these solutions uh, you? in one hour. Um, we've got obviously above there, we've got the, the suggested and below. They're not so, um, so useful. Um, like this just gives you uh, a glimpse of, of how much technology is out there and is available for uh, you know the blind and visually impaired and, and for those with nystagmus. Um, there are I've, got a I've got a hand up with uh, 
Pam, uh, are you uh, off mute, mute Pam? Do you want to ask a question? Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yep. Hi. Uh, it's actually my husband. He saw a newspaper sitting on the desk against one of the um, well, same. things. I think it was the compact 10 HD with speech. Uh -huh. What he wants to know is, could he put the racing post, for instance, under that, and would it be able to read it to him? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's... Um... Sam, so can it read, Sam, can it read columns, though? Yes, the Compact 10. Yes, yes, absolutely. So the Compact 10, um, it has a... You know, it, it's, it's very good at picking up the format of the text on the page. So yeah, it will it will read columns. You can also ask it to to not read incomplete columns. Okay, so when reading a newspaper, that's really useful. So it will just read the complete column that it's that it's picked up. Um, so yeah, right. so the Compact Ten is perfect for that. Yeah. You haven't given us any prices on this last lot. You're sitting down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, it is. I did. I, sorry, I, I maybe maybe miss miss her, but the, the compact ten is with speech is fifteen hundred. Well, fourteen ninety five. Um, without speech, just the magnifier is is nine nine five. Um, yeah. So that's that's excluding speech. Um, I think. Yeah. All right. Um, can we contact you for an assessment? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so obviously, at the moment, everything's remote, so we can we can organise a. Session. If, if I um, go on, I can I can I can track track down the, the contact details here. Yeah, Pam, we'll get through to you. We'll have your uh, email yeah. address from the registration, and we'll 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 contact you and uh, set up, set up set up some information. We we're very happy to show all sorts of technology. There's absolutely no obligation. Uh, this is really nice. about education, and if it works, yeah. it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, no problem. Good. Okay. Yeah, and that just leaves us to say, um, before we do say goodbye, um, there's a few little resources that, that are worth worth um, you all taking away with you today. Um, we do have an app. Um, Glenn um, and and uh, some of the, the, the team developed uh, an app called What AT App. It's available for, for um, Apple uh, iPhones and for Android as well. Um, I believe on the iPhone it's What AT Pro. And uh, for Android, it's just Watt 18. Um, and basically, this outlines any condition, eye condition you can think of. Obviously, we're specific to nystagmus here. But then it pairs the nystagmus condition with suggested solutions. So it's doing exactly what we're doing today, basically. So it's really useful. Um, obviously, that's our website there. Um, you know, Sight and Sound, we, we do have specialist assistive technology advisors. So we aim to, you know, sit down and assess your, your needs. Um, and find a solution that works. Um, that, that's the whole idea. We've got designated technical support as well. So that really just set us apart as a company. We have a designated technical support team. Um, so if you buy a product from Sight and Sound, you have technical support for life. Okay, you've got a, a designated team to help you with with all your your questions and and uh, difficulties. Um, we also have a, a training team. So any of our kit that is purchased, uh, software or hardware. Um, we are able to come and, and visit you at home or at work or at school um, to take you through a training session. Um, that can be a half day, a full day, whatever whatever you need. Um, and we do have a regular podcast as well, which you'll find on our website, uh, on our social media pages, um, which gives you updates and gives you various, um, yeah, the episodes vary in, in their content. Um, but we're very active at the moment, obviously, as you can imagine, um, with the lockdown. So please. Do do tune into the podcast and blogs and any more upcoming webinars. We've got a lot of webinars planned at the moment, so please do stay close to our social media pages and our website, and you'll find all the information you need. Um, yeah, through those through those sources, um, and that's just our, our yeah our contact information. Um, but yeah, as, as Glenn said, if you if you do if you are interested in any of the kit you've seen um, or you'd like to have a chat in, in more detail, please do either get into contact with Sue at the Nice Magnus Network or directly with us and we'll get that arranged for you. Um, we, as Glenn said, we do offer no obligation um, uh, assessments and, and uh, demonstrations. Um, so we'll be happy to do that um, for, for anybody. Good. Excellent. Uh, we 
just over our time. So uh, get hold of us uh, um, by the uh, website or um, uh, just raise your hand. We, we're obviously going to um, find Pam and uh, contact her and we'll, uh, uh, and we're all back up in two weeks uh, uh, for a session uh, uh, trying to target technology for, for younger uh, users as well. So there'll be a bit, little bit of overlap, but we're going to try and find some different technologies to try to bring some of the same messages home. Um, and this is trying to be an educational session. Um, this is not a sales session. It's really just to try and show you new tech that's out there. Someone said that upgrading and the speed of movement of technology uh, is a real challenge. And it is, it does move fast. There's new things all the time, but you know, uh, most of the things we've shown you have been around as concepts for at least 10 years. So um, investments you make in technology, I do believe will last you quite a long time. And then it's generally your own choice to upgrade because um, these things just do last a long time. They don't really uh, stop working. Phones, obviously they move on, uh, but the computer software is upgradable as well. So, um, you know, if you can find tech that works for you, um, it does change your life. And uh, so look, we're really pleased to, um, uh, I've spent some time with you. Find us one way or another, or we'll find you. And um, maybe we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time, this time on the 7th of May. Uh, we'll be back again to uh, run another quick session like this. Keep it to an hour if we can. Thanks for taking the time. And thanks, Sam, for your third or fourth one today. Well done. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Yes, we'll see bye. you soon. Bye.